Microsoft did a study, um, and hey, we didn't do the study, of course, uh, but there are some, we wanna, we wanna talk about it. Yeah, so Microsoft just released their most recent work trend index. And of course, it has a lot of data, early data on the use of Gen AI with their co-pilot. And it had some really interesting things. So I kind of want to back up on that. You know, we have access to things much earlier than a lot of people do. And so we see things when they're kind of brand new and maybe aren't working as great, or we we actually know enough about it to know kind of how to how to tweak the prompts and get out of it what we need. And so it really is good to see some data from actual users. Now that they have Copilot in GA, especially in Microsoft 365, they have some data. So they have, um, I'll just give you some numbers. So 70% of Copilot users say they're more productive and 68% have improved the quality of their work. 29% um, say that it, they were faster in a series of tasks. When this is interesting, because I think we've seen this with like Zoom, and now I've, I've heard sort of anecdotally from Cisco, um, people are able to get caught up on meetings four times faster. 64% um, help, them, help them process email faster. 85%, um, and this is actually somewhat surprising to me, 85% of users say that they get a good draft faster. Now, I've tried... Not I'm um, not just in in Microsoft Copilot, but in a lot. I'm talking like, you know, um, Grammarly, Jasper, many of these AI, AI tools. tools, and I find them to be really formal in their tone. And I think that's something that a lot of these models sort of have the goal of, which is kind of learning your tone, your your language. You know, the um, Chat Chat GPT plus whatever the, the paid users, um, you can do that um, custom instructions. So you say like, I'm an analyst and I do this and I want things to be a, a certain way. So every single time you enter a prompt, you don't have to tell it to not use bullets or whatever it is. But I do find that somewhat interesting that they would get to a good draft on, on the first try because I find it to not, and maybe it's just because- You're you know, very, you're wording it uh, very well and- <laughs> I have not seen, I have not had had an example uh, where, where that was the case. And maybe we're too picky of writers. Um, yeah. I've, even, I've even tried it uh, on LinkedIn. And I got to tell you, when it's like improve with AI, I don't think it's improved it ever. Not yeah. once. And, and maybe it's this, this is the personal thing, right? I, I have no idea, you know? Yeah. I think you have a point there that you know, so much of what we do is distilling our thoughts and our analysis into the written word. And so we are very picky about how that comes across. And it does have to sound like us. I mean, if somebody reads an article by Patrick Moorhead, they're going to know if it was written by you. I, I can read it and I'd be like, that sounds like Pat. You know, it, we all have our own tone and kind of the way we pick things apart and the way that we share our opinions. And AI is not going to do that for you, you know, I mean, much less, you know, there's the whole intellectual property side of it where you have to have actually like real serious input into it for you to maintain IP. And that's a whole different topic we can get into on another day. Yes, another and, day. And, and, and right, we have not used with a full uh, cadre of data uh, the Microsoft Copilot with M365. And if we did, uh, we're not allowed to talk about it until it goes, you know, uh, uh, either. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty enthused. And I think maybe people, if they're a Google shop or something like that, or they're a Microsoft shop and they use Slack, or they're a Microsoft shop and they use Zoom uh, or something like that, maybe this would get them to, to rethink about this. Because, you know, the biggest thing we've learned about generative AI is that uh, the better the data, uh, that's personalized, that is that is not just, you know, the Encyclopedia Britannica um, version uh, of this with the added intelligence, the better, uh, the better the results are going to be. Yes. And I think there's, there's this kind of sort of misunderstanding that people think that the, you know, the large in large language model, it's like the larger the model, the better. The reality is you, 
you kind of want to go deep on certain models, not wide, because then it's going to know the context of what you're trying to write. And I think that's where Zoom, Microsoft, Google, there's, you know, certain where they're, they're taking kind of this, you know, I'll use the term federated approach to AI, where they're using different models in different situations and tying it to the graph or the, their, that tenant where it's only pulling from your data, the model's just going to be smarter and it's not going to just be pulling from random sources on the internet and, and trying to tell you, you know, come up, it, it, the, it, that gives more opportunity for hallucination in that sense. So that I feel like we, yeah. Oh, sorry. I just, um, I'll, yeah, I'll end with this. I feel like we've drained this topic, but no, please add. I just wanted to end with 77% said that once they've used Copilot, they didn't want to give it up. And this morning I had a briefing with um, Cisco WebEx and Javed Khan, who's the senior VP and general manager of Cisco Colab said that they've actually had to cut off the number of beta users who are using some of their Gen AI features in WebEx because they 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 like it so much that they're using it so much they've actually had to limit it. So they're getting that same kind of response of they once they use it they don't want to give it up. And so I think this Microsoft Trend Index is it's it is a reflection of what's happening in Microsoft 365. But I think we can kind of expand on it and say it's probably happening in you know, throughout, we just don't have that data yet.